When I purchased my 2013 Trek Mamba, I was a newbie and didn't do my research. My understanding of different types of fork suspension was limited, and test riding the bike in the parking lot was not a good indicator on how well the bike would perform on my local desert trails. However, I learned to ride our rocky terrain, I made some component upgrades, and even took the bike to Moab. A couple years later, I purchased a full suspension trail bike and the hardtail became a commuter bike and rarely hit the dirt. I still have some nostalgia for the bike and would like to breathe new life into this budget hardtail. In the previous videos, I updated the rims and went tubeless. I also converted the 3x9 drivetrain to a 1x9. For the final upgrade, I'll be replacing the old heavy coil fork with a new lighter air fork. Since I'll need to cut the fork steerer tube, I'll also install a new shorter stem and add a handlebar with a nice rise. Can this all be done on a budget? Can I do all these upgrades myself? Let's see how it goes. So let's take a look at what we'll be installing today. First I'll convert this Manitou Markor fork from 100mm to 120mm of travel. The fork is shipped with 100mm but can be converted to 80 or 120 based on the available spacers. Next I'll cut down the steerer tube and install the Spank 40mm stem as well as the Spank Spoon handlebar with a 40mm rise. I'll finish off the upgrades with these ergon grips that should match at least one of my pedals. To do this job I'll need some iced coffee. It's early morning but already over 90 degrees out here in my garage. We'll need the socket wrenches to open up the fork, assorted hex wrenches to remove the spacers, extra grease if needed, and a pipe cutter to cut the steerer tube. The files will take out any sharp edges and we'll use the screwdriver to remove the crown race from the old fork. The torque wrenches will be used to install the stem, handlebar, and grips. So why replace a coil fork with this air fork? The main reasons is weight, adjustability, and rebound. Coil forks are heavy, the only adjustability comes from replacing the springs, and they offer no rebound. The Manitou Markor was affordable at $225 and light, almost a pound lighter, and it came with an option for 120 millimeters of travel. I could have purchased a similar RockShock Recon fork, but it only offered 100 millimeters of travel for non-tapered steerer tubes and quick-release wheels. The Spoon 785 bar was at a great price point and still pretty light. I wanted a riser bar and this was available with a 40 millimeter option. I also wanted to shorten my current stem so I got the matching spank stem at a short 40 millimeters. Adding these ergon grips in orange will be a nice final touch. The cockpit setup with the longer travel fork will give this bike a more modern geometry. First we'll convert this fork to 120 millimeters of travel by removing the 20 millimeter spacer. Deflate the shock, then take a 1316 socket to remove the cover with the Schrader valve. Next, use a 716 socket to remove the oil plug. Be sure to keep the fork flat to prevent losing any oil. I used an 8mm hex wrench to push out the spacers from the top of the fork. Remove the rubber gasket to access the spacer. Add grease if necessary and reinstall the rod. This next part was tricky as it took me quite a while to get it to seat back into the fork. You need to slightly turn the star-shaped rod so it slides back in properly. When aligned, it should go back in quite a few inches. Once back in place, it should line up with the oil plug bolt and you can then tighten it back on. Install the cap, then add air back into the fork. Next we need to cut the steerer tube. Make sure you measure twice and cut once. Since my new stem was about 5 millimeters taller than my old, I had to add another 5 millimeters to the length. My pipe cutter is a bit old and I should replace the blades, but with some strong coaxing I was able to cut through the tube. To finish the cut, use a file to take down the sharp edges from the outside as well as the inside. Install the headset star nut making sure there is enough space to tighten the stem cap. I removed it from my old fork using a screwdriver and was able to reinstall it on the new fork using an old socket extender and a hammer. There are better tools to do this, but I just used what I had on hand. If it didn't work out, I would have headed over to the bike shop for an assist. Now that the fork is ready, let's install it. Make sure the frame is wiped clean and add the bearings with some fresh grease. Slide in the fork, add the base and spacers, then add the stem. 
go ahead and install the stem cap. Make sure you don't tighten down everything so you can adjust the direction with the handlebar. The final steps for the upgrade will be to install the handlebar and new grips. Align the bar and install the face plate for the stem. Add the grip, then tighten down the shifter and the brake lever. Next, install the front brake and attach the hydraulic hose to the fork using zip ties. Manitou uses a reverse arch on their forks, so the hose is out of the way. Add the last grip and tighten down the front brake lever and we're done. When I weighed the bike in the last video, it was at an even 30 pounds. Now let's see where we end up. 28.86 pounds, over a pound lighter. When I started this project, the bike weighed in at 31.8 pounds, so overall we lost 3 pounds. When I first climbed on the bike, it reminded me of my test ride with the Pivot Firebird 29. The bike didn't ride like the Firebird, but with the shorter stem and the wider handlebar made the cockpit feel similar. Looking down at the fork is a little strange without seeing an arch. The theory is that the reverse arch helps protect the seals from dirt and mud being thrown up from the tires. We don't have much dirt and mud, but we do have a lot of dust. I'll let you know if it works. The performance on the small bumps feels good and the fork is pretty quiet. On some of the bigger bumps it seems like the compressing is a little too much, so I may just need to adjust the pressure. This is definitely much better than the old coil fork, but it is no match for some of the higher end forks like the RockShox Pike. However, I feel good about the performance, especially at this price point. Let's go over the specs for the bike. It's a 2013 Trek Mamba Gary Fisher Edition, size 17.5. It includes a Manitou Markor fork, a Spank spoon handlebar and stem, Shimano Dior brakes 180 in front and 160 in the back, Shimano XT cranks with a 30 tooth chain ring, Micro Shift Advent Shifter 9 speed derailleur and cassette with a range from 11 to 42. The wheel set includes a WTB SX19 rims. Novatech hubs, and a Maxxis High Roller 2 tire set up as tubeless. The remaining bits that came with the bike are the seat post, saddle, and headset, which I may change in the near future. I'm really happy with how the bike rides, and the new black fork and handlebar look fantastic. The fork came with additional neutral colored decals if you don't like the Manitou Red. Luckily my wife has a vinyl cutter and she scanned the decal and cut me out an orange logo to match the bike's black, orange, and white color theme. I have never named my bikes, but this effort changes everything. So I shall christen the Beatrix Kiddo, the Black Mamba. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. The video is a third in a series of upgrades for this bike. I will link the first at the end of the video. Have a good day and keep on pedaling.